It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden, and this is 5.45 Live. Tonight, we'll go live to the Women's Film Festival kickoff reception. Get you footage of Peter Welsh's visit to downtown, launch our 2012 election coverage, and a lot more. And remember, we do it all in 15 minutes, so stick with us. Let me add my strong belief that if the United States Senate had 83 women and 17 men rather than 83 men and 17 women, my strong guess is that a bill like this would never even make it to the floor. And welcome to this March 2nd, 2012 edition of 545 Live. That's Vermont U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders on the Senate floor yesterday debating the Blunt Amendment, which would allow employers and insurance companies leeway to deny any federally mandated health care to American citizens based solely on moral and ethical grounds. Critics of the amendment have called it ludicrous warning that placing ethical decisions in the hands of insurance companies and not the government would be widely detrimental to Americans. As many expected, the bill was effectively killed by the Senate last night, but not before getting through the House. You can watch Bernie's full comments on the amendment. He says tried to roll back the clock on women's rights on our 545 Live Facebook page and at youtube.com slash Senator Sanders. All right, we're going to jump into the headlines in just a moment. But first, what began two decades ago as a small but feisty fundraising effort for the then Women's Crisis Center in Brattleboro has now grown to be one of Brattleboro's premier events with an exclusive roster of high caliber, even Academy Award winning films, international submissions, and off screen events. Yep, that's uh, the Women's Film Festival we're talking about. The festival officially kicks off next Friday, March 9th, with daily film screenings held through March 18th at the Latches and New England Youth Theater. And while we've still got a week before the curtain goes up on the movies, uh, the festival's opening reception, complete with previews for the films and food, is going on tonight all the way up until 8 o'clock at the Hooker Dunham Lobby at 139 Main Street, just south of the River Garden. Uh, We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll go live to the event where some of the festival's longest-running volunteers are on hand to tell us about it and about the festival's upcoming attractions. Ladies and gentlemen, Michelle Wright. I'm coming out in 20 days. So you accept the fact that this could be a career-ending decision? Oh, absolutely. So I hear you came out this morning, the Today Show. (laughs) You're out all day. You're out forever. Wish me away. Welcome back. That's the trailer for Wish Me Away, one of the festival's many films I'm particularly psyched about, about Shelley Wright, country superstar, grappling with her decision to make public her sexuality. That shows Wednesday, March 14th at The Latches at 8.45 p.m. and Sunday, March 18th at NYT at 6.30 p.m. All right, and with that, it's time to get our remote broadcasts... All right, and with that, it's time to uh, remote broadcast down to the Hooker Dunham via Skype, a uh, little cell phone uh, broadband access, hopefully a little duct tape and chewing gum will seal the deal on it. Let's see if we can uh, get the broadcast up here and if I can yammer away long enough to get this all working. Volunteer Paige Martin is standing by uh, with folks down there to tell us a little bit about the festival. Uh, if you can hear me, go for it. Hi, I'm Marilyn Buhlman. I'm one of the major coordinators for the Women's uh, Film Festival, and uh, this is our 21st year. Tonight is our reception as part of Gallery Walk, and um, if you want to get some information about the festival, hopefully you can come down to Gallery Walk tonight, and if not, go to our website, www.womensfilmfestival.org. Um, it's a benefit for the Women's Freedom Center, and it's a festival that is just filled with dynamic, wonderful, moving, inspiring films. All right, terrific. Festival last year raised $18,000 for the Women's Freedom Center, which serves all of Wyndham County and offers women and children who have experienced domestic and sexual violence, shelter, advocacy, safety planning, individual and group support, referrals, and more. We'll post the link to the Women's Freedom Center website on our 545 Live Facebook page, and we'll post the festival website links where you can find out how to get tickets, sign up to volunteer, donate, and see the complete schedule for all the screenings. 
All right, moving on, we'll stick with the uh, Hooker Dunham for just a moment, where tonight the art show companion to the festival film War, Women's Art Revolution, goes up. That's in the DNH Gallery, just through the side entrance doors across from the River Garden patio. We actually saw it in the background of that clip just moments ago. Last night, as the finishing touches were being put together on the exhibit, we spoke with the show's associate curator, Marguerite Fields, about the importance of highlighting women's art. This month we have an all-ladies show uh, in conjunction with the Brattleboro Women's Film Festival uh, and we are showing all women, all Vermont artists. I think it's really exciting that we're, that we're working in conjunction with the um, Women's Film Festival and it's particularly exciting because areas like film and art have notoriously and historically kind of been closed off to women and I think it's really important to highlight how much talent there is, especially just in a place like Brattleboro. There's a huge amount of talent and there's a huge amount of um, female talent that I think it's really important to access and to highlight. The exhibit is open to the public tonight and is available by appointment for the remainder of the month by calling 802-380-1607. All right, and with that, uh, we're going to jump into the headlines. Uh, it was just weeks ago that the state officially appealed the ruling from Judge Jay Garvin, Murtha, and Entergy's lawsuit against Vermont's Act 160 legislation. But now it's Entergy's lawyers who have petitioned the court to reopen the case. Entergy is now claiming that the state's public service board could exploit what they're calling a loophole by granting the plant a new operating license, but refusing them permission to store spent nuclear fuel when the original agreement expires this month, in essence forcing the plant to close, despite its 20-year extension from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Red flags were raised for Entergy's legal team earlier this week after a public service board memo was circulated saying, quote, what does Entergy BY plan to do with spent fuel generated as a result of its operation? Entergy spokesperson Michael Burns was quoted as saying, We made a number of filings asking the court to provide clarity for all parties regarding certain aspects of Judge Murtha's decision. All right, and moving on, Peter Welsh was downtown uh, this afternoon, around noon at the River Garden, uh, to host uh, an open conversations with local constituents, with Vermont's sole U.S. House rep addressing a wide variety of local residents' concerns. All right, next, it looks like mediation has paid off for basic. Brattleboro Area Skate Park is coming. Um, with the intervening resident Barry Adams dropping his appeal with Vermont's environmental court of the park's DRB permit for the Kroll lot after the town agreed to shave a thousand square feet off the skate park and put up concrete barriers to reduce noise. Wednesday morning, the select board voted to adopt the agreement, but select board chair Dick DeGray says this means only that the town now holds the permit and plans to build the park have yet to be greenlit. At Wednesday's meeting, DeGray made clear that the location of the park was still open for debate, saying, quote, the board has the authority to revisit the issue. It is within our purview to do that. All right, uh, and with that, we'll jump into elections 2012. And here's the uh, graphic I spent way too much time working on today to try and uh, get all of you as excited for elections 2012 coverage as I am. Uh, with Monday's 545 Live broadcast lining up to be an all-out blitz and rumors of Tuesday night's 545 Live special potential. And while newcomer William Morlock's departure from the Brattleboro Select Board race has left the two one-year seats uncontested, the race for the three-year seat is still on with longtime development review board member Catherine Turnis taking on incumbent David Gardenstein. I'd like to continue serving on the Select Board for three years more in order to continue the progress that we've made over this difficult year. I think that I would consider myself a part of the community that I feel needs to be addressed and that is the people who are living on very limited income and not just seniors but as well as families. David Gardenstein and Catherine Turnis at the League of Women Voters Forum last month. All right, moving on. Town Grand Juror will be contested for the first time in over a decade. The position currently held by Richard Cook has long been considered a figurehead position, but race newcomer Kurt Dimes says there's more to it than that. We have 
a couple of things that people in Brattleboro are very worked up about. Uh, one of them is uh, Vermont Yankee. I hope to be able to use the powers of, ten of the grand juror uh, to uh, help close that nuclear power plant. Town grand juror predates the days of district attorneys and no longer plays a role in the local legal arena with the latest plans for the revised town charter removing the position altogether. But according to the town's website, the grand juror has the same power in the town as the attorney general has within the state and prosecutes as needed. And whether you're looking to vote on that race in particular, or uh, many of the other races going on, there are plenty of reasons to get to the polls today. We spoke with Brattleboro Town Clerk Annette Cappy earlier about the vote. You'll have an opportunity to vote in the local elections, the Republican primary, and the Democratic primary. And you can vote right up until 5 o'clock on Monday early if you want to vote in the town clerk's office, or if you want to come to the polls on Tuesday, the polls open at 9 o'clock in the morning, and we close at 7. And that's at the BUHS Gymnasium. All right, and before we jump into traffic and weather ever so briefly, we've got a sports update from the recently reprised BUHS TV, Brattleboro's uh, morning news advisory program from the high school today. Social studies teacher Karen Henry donned pom poms for an update on all the sports goings around the school. Oh, they T bowed me. Oh, good morning, BUHS. <laughs> Girls hockey won their game versus Mount Mansfield 7-1. Boys hockey beat Linden 9-1 on Wednesday. They, get, they have a game tomorrow versus U32 in Barrie. Good luck to the boys hockey team in their playoff quest. You can catch BUHS TV weekday mornings uh, at 10 a.m. Two clicks up the dial on our government and education sister channel, channel 10. All right, we've just uh, got to go really quickly through traffic and weather as the clock Clicks down, ticks down on uh, all the, the goings on around here. For that, we're going to do our high-tech traffic report. I'm hoping if I say high-tech enough that people get as excited about it as I am. It's powered by Inrix and Beat the Traffic and gives us a real-time update to the minute of what's going on in downtown using a color code, which uh, goes as follows. Red is standstill traffic. Uh, orange is heavily congested, but moving and green is good to go. So if we take a look at the downtown area, uh, the key uh, section is High Street to Canal Street. This is often a solid block of red standstill traffic, but uh, there's a little reprieve for uh, folks headed south. Of course, if you're going northbound, you are still in that deadly standstill red traffic as uh, folks going through downtown often are. If you're going west, uh, out High Street looks like uh, you've got the the orange there, which means uh, that there is heavy traffic. But if you're coming into downtown uh, from Western Ave, you are in the clear Putney Road, Route 9 out to Keene, Western Ave and Canal Street are all heavy volume traffic, and 91 traffic goers are good to go, as is often the case. That's our traffic report, and whew, so little time left. Let's do the weather quickly. Uh, hard to believe that snow is on the menu again after the kind of winter that we've been having, but that is the case. That uh, deadly phrase, wintry mix, that people like to use is on for tonight, so be safe out on the roads. That's going to wrap up late tonight, early tomorrow morning. Uh, we're going to get rain tomorrow for Saturday, but uh, things start to pick up with sun and uh, a few clouds Sunday and Monday. Then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all the way through the week, looks like it's going to be sunny. Temperatures could reach up to 60 degrees, and we get rain and clouds back for next weekend. That's the weather. Um, and uh, that's that's the show, really. Wrap it up, though, with a few notes before we close out. Obviously, it's Gallery Walk, so get out there and support downtown if you'd like and enjoy the bevy of weekend events, which includes Guilford's annual Sugar on Snow dinner tomorrow at the Broadbrook Grange at 5 p.m. Uh, there's more events to be found on the master calendar at ibrattlebro.com. And tonight, right here on BCTV Channel 8 at 8, catch the Women's Film Festival Roundtable discussion, complete with film previews and event details. All right, that's a full lid. Thanks for checking in with Beam Up. Remember, we'll be back Monday with all that 2012 election coverage that I've been promising. We'll riff on the headlines, do traffic and weather, all the usual shenanigans and more. All right, for BCTV and 545 Live, I'm Roland Boyden. Night, everybody. <laughs> You guys are in the reflection. You're in the reflection. Yeah, that's the
the hidden stuff.